Hello guys, we meet after a long time and I hope that you are enjoying the course. Now today I am going to discuss assignment 1 and uh, if time permits then assignment 2. Now I have uh, set the assignment little uh, difficult because I suppose that uh, doing this kind of problems only you will get a better understanding of the theory or uh, of the concepts which we actually we have discussed during the lectures. So one by one I will now discuss the uh, whole assignment 1. So the first problem was that mark the correct workflow for MEM sensor and for MEM sensor what we know that the first let us say uh, for a MEM force sensor it will be like an external force and that external force will be applied on some or will act on some moving structure. And then because of that act, uh, external force some deflection will happen and then we will measure this deflection by some electronic or optical way and then we can back calculate the applied force. So the correct option is C. So C is the correct option. Now next question is from scaling that is uh, the question is that what is critical length for a glass cube having density of 2500 kg per meter cube to float on a fluid having surface tension of 27.56 milli Newton per meter. Now uh, buoyancy will be neglected. Now this problem is uh, almost uh, similar or exactly similar just the values are different from uh, like the problem what we have discussed during the lecture. So uh, but still we will do the solution. So we know that there are two different forces right. One is the mg or the weight of the block which is acting downward and then we have uh, surface tension force which is gamma s and that is acting upward right and we are, we are neglecting buoyancy. Now at critical uh, length where exactly these two forces will be similar uh, will be same is when gamma s is equals to mg right and then you know we know that s equal to 4 L. So because this is a block and similar to the our uh, uh, like the lecture problem it is 4 L where L is the each side of the block into mg, m is what? m is equal to density into volume. So density is rho and volume is L cube for a block so into g and then if we put uh, all the things together then we will get that L square is equals to 4 gamma divided by rho into g right or L equal to square root of 4 gamma by rho g and if we put uh, gamma equals to 27.56 right. So here you have to be very careful with the units okay. So this is for 27.56 milli Newton per meter. Now that means that it is 27.56 into 10 to the power minus 3 Newton per meter. So everything we are doing in SI unit. So accordingly we need to convert all the values also in one kind of unit. Then G equals to 9.8 into meter per second square and rho is given as 2500 kg per meter cube. So if you put all these values then we will get L equals to 2.12 millimeter. Now the next question is from mechanics and what we are seeing here that there are uh, two beams which are connected in parallel and the mass is connected to that right and we have the uh, beam length as L, width as W and depth as H. 
the beam material has an elasticity of E, what will be the equivalent spring constant for such a system. As the force acts this word vertically downwards, right, then it is only axial stress and for axial stress we know that for any singular, single beam what we have discussed during the lecture uh, videos that K equals to W H E by L. Now both the beams are same, so both the beams have same K value, right, and they are connected in parallel. So if they are connected in parallel, so it is like a parallel spring, right. So they are like two springs connected in parallel. And then let us say we are pulling it, this is fixed end. Now for this case we know that the equivalent spring constant K equivalent is equal to 2K. That also we discussed during the lectures, right. So here the correct option is 2WHE by L. Okay. So the next question is also related to scaling or to give, uh, give an idea of how the surface and volume relates. Okay. Now uh, in this uh, question you can see that there is a match box and each match stick is five, 50 millimeter long and cross sectional area uh, is 4 millimeter square. Now assume also that each match stick need 1 millimeters of surface coating for ignition means at the side of the um, in, in this side of the match box we need 1 millimeter square of coating for at least uh, one match stick. Now the match box size is 50 mm into 30 mm into 4 mm. So the question is, is there enough ignitable, ignitable area uh, for all the match sticks it can enclose. So you can see that the right answer is yes, we have enough area, but let us uh, calculate that. Volume of the box V equals to L into B into H and that is equals to 50 into 30 into 4. That comes about 6000 millimeter cube volume of each stick. So this is volume of each, uh, the box now volume of each stick is equals to 50 into 4 millimeter square is the area. So 50 into 4 that is equals to 200 millimeter cube. Now it can uh, enclose then number of stick, number of sticks equals to 30 and we know that one, one particular uh, stick need 1 millimeter square, right. So 30 stick needs 30 millimeter square of ignition area. Area equals to 30 into 1 equals to 30 millimeter square. Okay. Now how much can be the area of the, this side? So this side area is, this is 50 and 4, right? So the length is, uh, length L is 50, length L is 50 and the height is 4 millimeter. So the area available Fifty into four equals to two hundred millimeter square, which is greater than thirty millimeter square. So we have 
enough area to ignite all the sticks. Now this question <coughs> is again related to scaling and this is just uh, simple mathematics what you need to do. So here we have given the frequency formula that is frequency f is equal to 1 by uh, 2 pi into square root of k by m and that also you know from spring mass system that the natural frequency is 1 by 2 pi into square root of k by m where k is the stiffness and m is the mass. Now here you see that I have mentioned that the effective mass. So what you need to understand is the actual mass and effective mass while vibration or lump mass while vibration is not same because, because uh, of the stiffness it also uh, contribute to the inertia. So because of that the stiff um, effective mass or lump mass while vibration and the actual mass of the system may not be same. But in that case we have already mentioned that the actual mass or the body mass and the effective mass is related just by a constant. So it does not matter. So we have mentioned that we will consider only transverse vibration. Transverse vibration means that the cantilever is like this, one side it is fixed and the other side I am just applying transverse force, right. So this is transverse vibration and for transverse vibration we know that the stiffness constant, let us say call it kt is equals to 3 yi or ei where y is the Young's modulus by L cube where I is the area moment of inertia. We know that I equals to B H cube by 12. If we put that then it becomes K T equals to Y B H cube by 4 L cube. Now, for the both the cases like alpha and beta uh, one case it is only uh, BHL and another case we are multiplying with the uh, scaling factor alpha and beta. So K1 where we are not multiplying anything any scaling factor there it will be Y BH cube by 4 L cube and K2 where we are multiplying with a scaling factor then beta becomes b becomes alpha b and h becomes beta h. So it will become alpha b into beta h whole cube divided by 4 L cube. So k1 k1 by K2 is equals to 1 by alpha beta Q. Now what is the ratio of the masses? So mass M1 by M2 is equals to rho into the volume. Volume is in the first case it is L B H and in the second case it is L alpha b to beta h. So it becomes 1 by alpha beta right. So the f1 by f2, f1 by f2 is equals to 1 by 2 pi will get cancelled and then you will get k1 by k2 square root of k1 by k2 into m2 by m1 and that is equals to square root of 1 by alpha beta q into alpha beta and that gives you only 1 by beta and beta was mentioned as 10 to the power minus 4. So 1 by beta is 10 to the power 4. So the correct term is 3. Now next question is very simple. Actually we have just asked to uh, calculate the capacitance and uh, force for two different cases. Again just by changing the unit. 
from meter to micrometer. Now, the uh, objective of this question is to make you understand that you, you will see in the answer that uh, while the force is uh, same, the capacitance is different, but still the force is same and that we will calculate now. So, we know that C is equal to epsilon naught A by D, let us say we are considering free space. So, C equal to epsilon A by D and force is equals to minus of D D G, G means the gap of the energy stored in the capacitor and that is equals to half C V square. Let us write it also as G. Okay. So, if you calculate uh, like C equal to again epsilon naught A by G. So, you will get minus minus will get cancelled. So, you will get half of epsilon naught A by G square and on top V square, right. That is the force. Now, the point I would like to uh, clarify here, see that the C for the capacitance it is on in the numerator it is area and in the, the denominator it is um, only a length scale that is the gap. So, the scaling effect like changing the unit will affect the capacitance. So, if you cal if you put all those values like this area gap and uh, epsilon naught you already know. So, then you will get that without scaling. without scaling C W S equal to 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 14 farad. Okay. Whereas, if you make it to if you make it to my, uh, meter to micrometer then you will get C scaling is equals to 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 20. So, the point here is that you see our uh, 88.5 into 10 to the power minus 21. So, the point here is once we calculate you calculate without uh, scaling then you do not need to calculate again the full uh, for the scaling because you know that you are changing just from meter to micrometer and for that there will be extra 10 to the power minus 6 at the numerator. So, that is uh, that came here and that is why it becomes just 10 to the power minus 20 and if you put all those same epsilon naught A and uh, G value whatever is given according to the question then you will get that force without scaling is equals to 110.625 into 10 to the power minus 8 Newton and with scaling you do not even need to calculate because it will be the same value. Right? Because A and G both will convert uh, will get converted from meter to micrometer. So, you do not need to calculate anything and we directly uh, get the uh, well uh, answer. So, this is question number 6 to 9. Now, choose the incorrect option. So, in that you know that uh, 1 by rho is equal to m by e i or 1 by rho is equal to the radius of curvature is equal to d to w d x square. These are all uh, like correct expression, but the c is not a correct expression. So, this is the uh, answer. Now, two statements are given. One is strain energy of a body is uh, integration over half sigma epsilon. Sigma epsilon means your uh, stress and strain and another is Castiglione's theorem. And if you uh, see the lecture videos then both the uh, options are correct, both the statements are correct. So, this is C. Now, uh, question number 12, there we are uh, giving a beam, polysilicon beam which has a Young's modulus of, uh, Young's modulus of 170 GPA and uh, length is 100 micron with this 10 micron and height is 15 micron. Now, a proof mass of 50 microgram is attached to its free end resulting in a guided beam kind of motion. 
So this is an important point that the motion is already mentioned as guided. An acceleration is applied in y direction it is let us say 12 meter per second square and z direction it is 15 meter per second square. So the, if the spin constant for a guided beam uh, is all, already given and that also you have seen from our lecture video that it is 12 y i by L cube. Then what will be the magnitude of deflection produced in y and z direction. So you are already saying that this is the correct option, but how do you calculate? So for that just uh, it is the same like you just need to put the formulas, but you need to be careful about a few things. So what are those things? First of all k equals to 12 y i by L cube. Now i is equal to b h cube by 12 right. Now for the y direction, for the y direction I can directly put that right b h cube by 12. So it is k y is equal to 12, 12 will get cancelled then y b h cube by L cube. You know all the values, if you uh, put those values then you will get k equals to 5737.5 Newton per meter. So one thing you need to be careful, 170 GPA, y is equal to 170 GPA means 170 giga Pascal or 170 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square. So, all the units will be in meter or Newton or kg like that right and uh, like uh, B, H and L all the values are given in micrometer. So, you have to convert it to meter by multiplying 10 to the power minus 6. So, like that if you put then you will get ky value. We have mentioned the acceleration and ask the deflection right. Now, what is the force? Force is equals to ky and let us say the deflection is y. So, ky into y ultimately I need to calculate the y and that is equals to m into a means mass uh, like the proof mass into the acceleration right. So, proof mass is so this is 50 micrograms. So, I am uh, one minute I will put that values and into a, a is the uh, let us say small a, small a is the acceleration. Now, small a in y direction is 12 meter per second square, but this m is equals to 50 microgram and I have seen many of the students have uh, uh, done this mistake that it has they have just converted it into gram. So, this is 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 gram, but we need to convert it into kg because that is the SI unit right. So, 10 to the power minus 9 kg. These things are simple but important because ultimately because of uh, this uh, unit conversion your whole uh, design will change. Now, so you know ky value, so y equals to or the deflection equals to m a by ky. So, m you know, a you know and ky you have calculated. So, if you put that you will get 0 0.1 micrometer. Now, for z direction also it is all same. Then why I gave this problem also for the z direction? Because you need to understand one particular concept here that is ky while the force is it applying in this direction, it is perpendicular to the width and along the edge. So, while I am using the i equal to bh cube by 12 expression, this is the area moment of inertia expression, I can use it directly. But if I apply the force in like z direction, then I am applying the force along its width and h is actually perpendicular. So, in that case, iz is not bh cube by 12, rather h b cube by 12 and because of that k z will change and k z all the other terms are same. So, it will be y h b cube by L cube and that will be equals to 
2550 newton per meter okay so but just by changing from uh, y to z direction the area moment of inertia changes and because of that kz changes and then you apply the again same uh, area uh, now the acceleration will be 15 meter per second square and mass is same only right so if you put all those value then the deflection in z let's assume that is z will be equals to m into az by kz equals to 0.29 micrometer so this is the correct answer now the next problem is also uh, from mechanics and similar kind of problem and you need to uh, be careful about the um, points which i mentioned in the last problem also okay so there are uh, six beams you can see and they are all connected to one side to the proof mass and another side is fixed now how these motions are for all of this motion you see last time we have mentioned right that this is guided beam but here we have not uh, here we have not mentioned but it will be guided beam only because there will be there will be no slope in this end also at this end right and because of that this is the guided beam uh, stiffness constant we know already 12 12 y i by l cube where i equal to b h cube by 12 and here you need to see that the out of the plane thickness is 2 micron right and in plane thickness is in plane width is 8 micron means this is 8 micron in plane with this 8 micron and out of the plane with this out of the plane thickness is 2 micron so in this case also like the 8 micron is actually the thickness because the proof mass is moving in this direction again let's say y here also it will be like we, okay we write y equal to b h cube by 12 12 uh, so 12 12 get cancelled and then l cube <coughs> but this so along the along the uh, force direction it is actually 8 micron so now the h is actually 8 micron and b is actually 2 micrometer right so and l to already you know 150 micron and uh, y is also given as 169 uh, gpa if you put those values then you will get the kg but uh, let us calculate the directly the equivalent like the k equivalent so k equivalent how much it will be see all these beams are connected in parallel right because all of them have the same deflection so k equivalent is equal to 6 kg right and we need to calculate ultimately the ultimately the uh, deflection right in y direction so we know the proof mass so 50 microgram mass right and 50 microgram mass means again m equals to 50 into 10 to the power minus 9 kg right it is not gram it is kg so if we uh, then the deflection y will be m into g g is 9.8 meter per second square divided by 6 kg if you put all those values then you will get you can directly put here that m into g divided by 6 y b h cube and on the top you can put as uh, put the l cube right and then you will get so uh, here you know m no you know m you know g equals to 9.8 meter per second square you know l equal to 150 micron you know y equal to 169 gigapascal or 169 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square you know b equal to 2 micron so this is most important that b equal to 2 micron and h is equal to 8 micron not the other way and if you put all those values then you will get 1.59 micrometer 
So, that is all for assignment 1.